Hi everyone, I am Precious and in this class we are quickly going to look at the concept of logarithms, the rules of logarithms. Now how to use the rules of logarithms, of course the base is always positive you know, in calculations. And then how to change the base of logarithms, it will be seen in the rules and how to solve problems involving logarithmic equations. These are keywords in this lesson. Alright, so what is logarithm? So by definition, if I have a raised to the power of x to be equal to b, then I can define x to be the logarithm of b to the base of a. So whenever you have logarithm, there is always what we call the number of the logarithm and then the base. So this, the y here is called the number of the log. Y x here is the base of the log. Now we say that the log of y, which is the number, to the base of x, the number that you raise x to, to get the value of y, and that's why we have this. So if I raise x to the value to m, and then I get y, then you say that m is the logarithm of y to the base of x. And now we have uh, some uh, things to note, basic types of logarithms. So we have what we call common logarithms, which are logarithms to the base of 10. All right, so and these logarithms are also written this way. So, for instance, if I want to write log x to base 10, I can also just write it as log x. And so, whenever you see a logarithm without a base, it is a common logarithm that means logarithm to the base of 10. And then we have what we call the natural logarithms that means logarithms to the base of e. Okay, so we can the impl uh, implication of this definition is that you can move. Um, a particular expression from logarithm to indices. So there is a relationship between indices and logarithm. Okay, so look at this. They're asking us to express the following logarithmic expressions in index form, about two of them here. And so how do we do that? Very simple. From this definition, what this thing means here is that if I raise y to the power of 3, I am going to get the number of the logarithm, which is 216. And it's actually this definition we apply in solving logarithmic equations. Okay, for instance, now, if I want to find the value of y now, all I need to do is to use the indices that we have done, change this in index form where the power is 3, and whatever is the base will be the value for my y. And then for this one now here, what it means is that 5, which is the base here, raised to the power of this value here is equal to 25. And of course, this is true. So your logarithm must always give you a true value in the index form, All right? And then the other way, like I said, we can also move from indices to logarithmic form. For, for instance, look at this now. They're asking us to express the, the following two in logarithmic form. And how do you do that? Very simple. And so the base here will always be the base of your log. And then the value here is uh, what you have here and the power here will always be your solution so 3 to the power of 4 is equal to h that's exactly what we have here and uh, to write this one simple the base here which is 2 will be the base of the log the value here will be the number of the log which is 1 all over 28 and then the power here will be the value of your the whole thing you are expressing okay so and of course if you still return it in this form you will get back what you are giving Okay, so let's look at the rules of logarithms. And then we are beginning with the first one, which is actually the addition rule. It says that when we add two logarithms with the same base, that is the same thing as picking one of the logs and then multiplying the numbers. Remember I said these are called the numbers. Okay, so this is just like the opposite of uh, or the reverse of indices. Okay, so look at this example. Remember I said these are called the common logs. The bases are 10. And so we are asked to evaluate. That means to simplify it to maybe a single logarithm. And so all you need to do is to pick one of the logs and then multiply the number since they have the same base 10. And when you do that, you will get uh, log 24. And uh, of course, we can stop here or we can use our calculators to get that value or even our four-figure tables. All right, example two says we should evaluate this one here. And so we should solve. And remember I said to solve any equation is to look for the value of the unknown. So here I'm going to apply two rules. That means I'm going to use the first rule here and then the definition of logarithm. And by the rule here, 
I'm going to pick one of these logs and multiply their numbers. Sorry, one of the bases and multiply their numbers, and that will be equal to six. And so by then, this is going to give me 64. And then using the definition of logarithm, this means that x raised to the power of 6 is equal to 64. And like what I said earlier on, to get the value of x, I will now apply indices by expressing 64 in index form where the power must be 6. So that I will use that rule that says that if the powers are the same, then their bases are the same. Therefore, my x is equal to 2. And then the second rule, the subtraction rule, it says that if you are subtracting two logarithms that have the same base, that is the same thing as division. And so what it means is that I can just pick one of the logarithms and the base and then divide the numbers. So let's look at some examples here. Now this example here is a combination of both this rule and this one. So I'm going to apply board mass. By board mass, addition comes before subtraction. So by that, I am going to, since the bases are the same, I'll just pick one of it and then multiply the first ones, which is just addition. And finally divide, since I have subtraction here, by this 18. And that's what we have here. And when you multiply this and divide by 18, you will get 243. And of course, this is going to give us 5. Now, but in the next rule, we are going to see how, how this is equal to 5. So the next rule here says, if the number of a logarithm is raised to a particular index, is the same thing as bringing that index to the back to multiply the whole of that log. Now, the fourth rule here is the identity rule. says that the, uh, the log of 1 to any base at all, that's why you have A here, is equal to 0. And you can see this from indices. Because anything raised to the power of 0 is actually equal to 1. So anything you put here as your a, of course, by definition, will be raised to the power of 0, and it will definitely be equal to 1. And then this fifth rule says that the logarithm of a number to the same base is equal to 1. And of course, you can also see that in indices, because only a raised to the power of 1 that will give you back your a. Okay, so let's look at this example that we just finished doing. So how did we get this to be equal to 5? So we are going to apply the rules we have here. First of all, now what you are going to be doing here is to see a way to express this, to be in index form where the base will be exactly the base of the logarithm. And that I have done here. And I have 3 raised to the power of 5. And so I'm going to use the third rule here by bringing this 5 to the back. And so it comes this way. And then I have log 3 base 3, and I will apply the rule 5. And with rule 5 says that log 3 base 3 is equal to 1. And so 5 times 1 gives us what? 5 as a solution. Look at the fourth, fifth example here. I'm going to apply the same thing. Express this root 1, 2, 5 in base 5, since the base of the logarithm is 5. And of course, 1, 2, 5 is 5 raised to the power of 3. And then the square root here will change to half. Remember that uh, this root 5 raised to the power of 3, of course, the 5 here, the root here will change to uh, uh, half. Remember I said square root means power of half in indices. And when that multiplies this 3, you will get 3 all over 2. And so we bring that 3 over 2 to the back here, and then log 5 base 5 is going to give us 1. 1 times this will return our 3 all over 2. As a solution look at the sixth rule the sixth rule now is saying what if the power is not on the number of the base but now on the base sorry on the number of the logarithm but now on the base of the logarithm so it will also come to the back to multiply but it will come as a reciprocal and that's what we have here look at the next example it says we should simplify this and so what do i do i will express root 7 to be in index form where the base will be 7. Now, of course, like what I said here, root is the same, that square root is the same thing as power half. And so this power half is going to come to the back here. And when it comes to the back, what happens is going to be 1 all over half. And you know that 1 over half means 1 divided by half. Of course, division changes to multiplication, so you have 2 over 1. And that's how we got these two here. So when it comes to the back, it becomes uh, 2. And of course, uh, log 7 base 7 is equal to 1. 1 times 2 is equal to 2. And then the next example there says we should uh, simplify this, which is going to give us, of course, we we'll try to take two of them to base 2. 32 is 2 raised to the power of 5, and 8 is 2 raised to the power of 3. So I will apply the first rule here, 
sorry, the rule here by bringing 5 to the back, it becomes 5. And then when I apply the 6 rule, 3 coming to the back will become 1 all over 3. And of course, it will multiply 5. And I have log 2 base 2 left, and the, which is 1. And so, of course, when 5 multiplies this 1 over 3, you'll get 5 over 3 times 1 here will still be 5 over 3. And so, the 7th and the 8th rule. This is the rule. We call them the change of base. You can use the two of them to change the base of a particular logarithm. So the first one here says that if I want the number to become the base and the base to become the number, all you need to do is to take the reciprocal. Very simple. And then the second one here says that if I have log A base, uh, log B base A, sorry, I can actually split the two of them into two different logarithms and then attaching different bases to them. And that would still uh, give me uh, the same answer. So what this means is that, for instance, you have log 8 base 2. I can actually write that this is the same thing as log 8 base 4 all over log 2 base 4. So far as you maintain the same base, this and this are actually the same. And if you simplify the two of them, you will get the same solution. Okay, so whereas this one is saying if I have log, uh, let's say, 8 base 2 uh, base 4, this is the same as 1 all over log 4 base 8. If you also simplify this, it will still give you the same solution. So let's look at some examples. Now, this example is going to handle the two is going to apply the two rules. So let's look at it. Solution. Okay, so it says we should simplify this. And so by board mass, remember division comes before multiplication. So we are going to handle this first. Okay, before now multiplying. Okay, so by division, I'm going to put it in this form. And when I do, look at what exactly it represents. The two of them have the same base. And so what it means is that I can now sh shrink the two of them to become one logarithm. And so, and in that logarithm, the number of the denominator becomes the base. And then the number of the numerator becomes the number of the new log. So see what we are going to have now. This will come down times. Now here, my A here becomes a number. My B here becomes the base, obeying this rule. And then finally, I am going to, if you look here, you see that the base here is the number here, and the number here is the base here. So I will apply the seventh rule to turn it upside down. So I'll, be, I'll get one all over. And so the number here becomes the base. The base becomes the number, obeying this rule. And why did I do that? So that I will be able to cancel out. And of course, this will cancel away this because two of them becomes the same. And so my solution is what? One. All right, so let's quickly look at some further examples you know, to buttress the rules that we have looked at. This says we should simplify this. So what do you do? Addition changes to multiplication. So of course, these two will multiply in base 5. And when it does, you are going to get log 25. And when you apply, change this to base 5. And then these two will come to the back. So you have log 5 base 5 times 2, which is 1. And that will give us 2 times 1. And so we have 2. So let's look at the next example. This example is very important, simplification. You are given some logs and their values, and you are asked to simplify a particular log, you know, using these particular given uh, values. Okay, so let's go. So for log 12, what you are going to do, your i must be on the logarithm values you are given. And so you are going to split the number you have here to uh, contain any of these that you are given. So I have 2, I have 3. I can split 12 into 2 times 2 times 3. And of course, I've not done anything. And by the first rule, I can now take this to addition. And so I'm going to have log 2 plus log 2 plus log 3 since they are multiplying. So log 2 is this, log 2 is this, and log 3 is this. All I need to do is to sum them, and that is the solution to this problem. And for the B part, what do I do? By that uh, division rule, you see that this is going to turn into, into subtraction. And we said that log 1 to any base is 0, while log 5 is given to be this. So I'm just going to substitute 0 and this, and this minus this will give me this. And that's just the solution. I will apply the power rule here. 25 is log 5 power 2, and 9 is 3 power 2. So I'll bring the 2, 2 to the back, and then substitute the values of log 5 and log 3. And so when this multiplies, I will get this, and then I will just add, and that will give me my solution. 
and kindly observe our objectives and if you have any question you can always reach out to us we'll see you in our next class bye